Uh, hey, uh, in Romans chapter 10, uh, I'm going to read you a few verses that Paul penned down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'll start at the beginning of the chapter, Romans chapter 10, starting from verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, for I bear record, for I bear them record, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And, you know, um, in Paul's time, the physical nation of Israel, they went, it got to a point where they went generations without pretty much the vast majority uh, of that nation went generations without knowing who God is, but, you know, thinking that they did. And, you know, that, that was pretty sad. You know, they, they were zealous for what they thought was the law of Moses. But, you know, they, they got mixed up with the laws of Moses and what they were for. And they also combined, you know, the traditions of the, the Pharisees. And, and uh, you know, they, in many ways they ended up nullifying the commandments of God. Uh, in favor of, you know, the, the commandments of, of men and the traditions of men of the Pharisees. But the point I want to make here is that, you know, obviously Paul had, uh, you know, he, he had a burden for, for the, the physical nation of Israel. And he knew that they had zeal but not according to knowledge. And Paul was like that before he got saved, where he he persecuted the church because he really thought that they were, you know, preaching heresy and all this, and he had a zeal um, of, of God, but not according to knowledge. And then when he got saved, he re received that knowledge. And uh, thankfully, he still had the zeal as well, but uh, a zeal with knowledge. Um but I do see some parallels with what was going on in Israel back then to what you call, I guess, you know, so-called Christendom now, right? Um, there's a lot of people that say they're Christians, and some of them can be really, really zealous, but not according to knowledge. And, you know, there's a lot of Calvinists that are, are zealous. There's a lot of lordship people that are zealous there's even some catholics that are zealous but not according to knowledge just like these uh these these jews were in paul's day and honestly even now there's many jews that are are still zealous about god but they don't even know god they're not even saved they reject christ as the messiah and you know, and naturally, what happens when you reject God, right? Well, if you reject God, you're ignorant of His righteousness. You're ignorant of God's righteousness. So therefore, you go about to establish your own righteousness. Um, which, you know, you're not thinking clearly when you do that. Because for you to think and believe that your your righteousness is on par with God's righteousness, it's just, man, you just went off the deep end, you know? There's like screws loose in your head. Um, what does the Bible say about the righteousness of man? Um... You know, in verse 5 in Romans 5.10, it says, For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that man that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And that's mentioned in Deuteronomy. I don't remember 
uh, the exact reference now, but I know it's in Deuteronomy. And uh, But I want to show you uh, a verse in Isaiah about our righteousness. Because in Deuteronomy, you know, there's a, a list of, of, of things about blessings and cursings. And saying, you know, if you do all these things, you're going to be blessed. But if you fail to do all these things, then you're going to be cursed. And then, you know, when you read Galatians, it talks about Jesus Christ freeing us from the curse of the law. Um, right? So, the fact is, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our righteousness cannot come by the law. Because we've, we've broken God's laws. And... Uh, in terms of our own righteousness, Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And, um, you know, our uncleanness and our, our sins and, and our... You know, zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, actually take us away from God. And, uh, you know, eventually some of us get saved. And, and we realize, man, that's exactly what we were doing, like like, the, like these Jews did here in, in, uh, in Romans 10 that Paul wrote about, that we were, um, we were ignorant of God's righteousness... And we wanted to go about establishing our own righteousness. And, you know, that's like work salvation, right? And work salvation is, is not any salvation. You'll, you'll go to hell if you trust in, your, if, in yourself to go to heaven. Um, because all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Our, our righteousness, you know, our best, our best is the filthy rag when you compare it to, to God's best. In God's righteousness. And, you know, there's a lot of, just like how there were Jews in Paul's day, and even Jews now, that they think that they're righteous. Um, there's people claiming that they're Christians, that believe themselves to be righteous. And if you think that you're righteous, it's just because you don't understand God's righteousness. Um, because... Once you begin to understand God's righteousness, you re you realize that there, you know, it'd just be foolish to compare your own righteousness to, because God is perfect. God's has never sinned. He's never had a foolish thought. You know, he's never been angry without cause. He's never, you know, lost his cool. He's never um, lusted or, or or lied. <laughs> you know, he. He, he's never, like, struggled with addictions. Uh, he He's never, you know... He's never, like, not done the right thing. You know, there, there's a lot of things that we as human beings are supposed to do, and we just don't do them. Right? Those sins of uh, omission. Uh, and then, of course, we have sins of commission sins that we actually commit think like you know some people commit adultery some people get get drunk some people murder some people steal but you know those things like don't even cross god's mind of, of you know like god it i mean just how pure were the thoughts of jesus christ You know, my thoughts certainly cannot come close to that. And, you know, before we're saved, we're, you know, before we get saved, we we look at the laws of God, we'll, we'll realize that it, all it can do is condemn us. And we're, we're under that curse. But, you know, Jesus Christ came to free us from the curse of that law. And verse 4 in Romans 10, 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You know, and 
you know, once we believe the gospel, once we put our faith in the death, burial, and re resurrection of Jesus Christ, and once we trust that what he did for us on the cross is enough, that he atoned for all our sins, that they're all paid in full, um, we can have the righteousness of Christ imputed onto us. And once we realize that Jesus Christ lived a life we sh sure couldn't live, right? A life without sin. Um, we'll realize that our, yeah, our righteousness totally, our own righteousness totally is filthy rag, right? Before we're saved, we're, we're dead in trespasses and sins. And, you know, What's so terrifying about somebody that's ignorant of God's righteousness is that because they're ignorant about it, they don't know, you know, how bad it is to be ignorant of God's righteousness. You know, they don't know that their own righteousness, you know, it's like they're filthy rags and they're like a leaf. It'll just fade away or go away. Like, it's nothing. It, like, what are you going to do with a filthy rag? And, but God's righteousness shall not be abolished. It'll, it'll last forever. Right? Because it's not like God's going to sin in the future. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a lot of, people that seem religious out there and they'll they might consider themselves to be religious and this is basically what I'm going to end this video on there's a lot of people out there that think they're very very religious right they think they're doing the work of God but they're not and they're ignorant of God's righteousness and therefore they go to establish their own righteousness they try to work their way to heaven. Um, and, you know, that, that's every unsafe person you meet, and especially the very religious people that, that are zealous, supposedly for the Bible, right? Um, but they just have no idea how holy and pure God actually is. And because they don't realize that, they find it to be all right to, you know, attempt to justify themselves through their own works, where it's it becomes a, a form of idolatry, where you think you could bring God down to your level. Um, but verse 6 in Romans... 10.6 it says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Verse 7, Or who shall ascend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. And, uh, well, let me keep reading. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And, uh, you know, a few verses later it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And thank God whosoever means anybody, right? And, you know, that verse, that verse 6 where it talks about, you know, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. And, you know, that, that's what the devil wanted to do. Right? He, he wanted to ascend. He wanted to be like the most high. And, you know, if you believe in work salvation... You're basically trying to be your own God and have your own standards. 
Because a lot of times when somebody points out that you come short of God's standards, you just pretend it isn't so. And you just deny clear scriptures, such as for all have sinned they come short of the glory of God. And once you start denying clear scriptures, but still thinking you have a zeal for God, then, you know, you're just walking in the vanity of your own mind and you're creating your own false god to worship, whether that's, you know, another Jesus with no power that's not actually God, or whether that's you're just worshiping yourself, you know, and, and, and basically be, being a god of your own, you know, empty mind. Um, you know, showboating your, your, your wicked works. Um, but you know what? Uh, if you believe the gospel, 